So now we need to fan this out. We need to put the fan out tube, the buffer tube on it. We're gonna measure this. We'll take this around once and we're gonna take it to this. There's a groove right here. We're gonna take it to this slot. That's all we need. Now you can always add more slack to it. So we can take it around twice if, if there's enough on the end, which we left plenty. So we're gonna take it around twice. That'll help us if anything goes wrong. And then take it to here, right about the middle. And then we're gonna mark that right about in the middle. Make sure you get it all the way around so that you don't miss it when you're looking for it in a minute. Okay, now before we put too much work into this, we're just gonna double check that our measurement is going to work, that we actually did leave enough slack. So we're gonna start on our mark. We're gonna start with the buffer tube clip here. Come all the way down. Yep, we've got more fiber than we do tube, so we're good. The next step, you can take your wire strippers and we're gonna use the biggest notch. If you don't have these handy, you can still use your snips. But the biggest notch is what it takes and you can bite down as hard as you want and it's not gonna damage the fiber. You can also just use your snips and ring it. Just ring around, ring around, ring around. You're not trying to cut it and pull it back, twist it and pull it back. And then now you can make two fists and pull it apart like that. But keep in mind that even if you do cut this, the fiber floats around free in there. So if your snips were to go through, they're not gonna immediately start cutting the fiber. They're gonna go through the blue tube a little bit and push this to the back wall. So you've got a little bit of a leeway. So you, you bite down like this and it goes through. It's gonna push the fiber into the back wall. You see how there's a gap over there or it moves, now there's a gap. So you're a little bit safe if you use your snips. Obviously you can't go all the way through, but it's not like if your snips go through, it's over. They can go through and you still got a little bit of play. So let's go to where we made our mark. This is our Sharpie mark here. We're gonna ring it, pull it apart, or to be more safe, we're gonna use the bigger hole here, bite down all the way, spin it just a hair, pull these straight apart. You don't wanna bend them sideways or anything, but just straight apart. Just keep it going. Now this fiber did get wet, so this is a little bit shiny and greasy. Normally this is dry and it's got almost like sandy grit in there. But all we're gonna do is wipe this off with a rag. If you have D-Gel, that works great too. But we're just gonna wipe these off. And you can see the gel bunching up as I'm pulling it. There we go, like a gross booger. And we're gonna do these one at a time. Like I said, if these are dry and there's just that sandy grit, you don't have to worry about this. But if it is wet and gummy, you need to do these one at a time. And as you do this, Make sure they don't fall and slap into the other ones that haven't been wiped. If you try to do this whole bundle and one fiber is rolled on top of the other, as you wipe it, it could be a little bit tangled and you're gonna break it. Or you could apply too much pressure with glass on glass and that'll also break it. So after a gentle overall wipe like I just demonstrated, then you wanna do these one at a time. All right, now I've got each one of these cleaned individually you can see they kind of separate on their own they spread out they're not clinging to one another so now here's the next step mm -hmm. you take your buffer tube kit and all of these colors are the exact same they all match and these are all hollow tubes you've got to get each fiber into each tube and have them match there's a couple ways to do this and here's the way I like to do it Hold it like this and like this as one, one unit. Get it where it's comfortable, but just one unit. And then start from one side to the next. So I put the blue here and it goes blue, orange, green, brown, slate, white, red, black, yellow, but all the way to the end. So we make sure this isn't tangled on anything. Take the blue and then you push it right in there. You wanna go a little bit careful and a little bit gentle because if it hangs up and you're still pushing it, you're not gonna feel the resistance in your fingers and then it'll bend and it could snap. So you go just a little bit at a time. There you go. Now we take this and look, it's not quite coming out yet. We're gonna go a little bit further. There we go. So now it's traveled all the way through the tube and it's coming back out. You see it? And then we just do each color like that. The other way is to take this with a piece of tape and tape it to the side of a desk or your work table. 
or tape it all the way around this thing to where you don't even have to hold it. Just the tape is holding it and lock it down someplace. But for me, I just like to hold it in my hand and do it all in one shot. Now you want to keep these nice and straight and dangling as much as possible. I showed her how to dangle. Hanging, you don't want these to be twisted or curved or bent or coming back up. You want them to dangle so that the fiber can just essentially fall straight down these tubes as comfortably as possible. You also want to make sure that you do this in good lighting because sometimes the orange or the red or the brown, some colors, they look a little bit different. Maybe get somebody to double check it for you because if you put a red in here in the brown slot or vice versa, there's no way to know because it'll look like a red tube and you won't be able to know. And it'll really give you a hard time for troubleshooting or testing in the future. Like if this side is done properly, the red and brown is done properly, but the other side is done improperly, that makes it tough. Sometimes you can push these in and it'll really get hung up. It just feels like it's not gonna go no matter what you do. So at that point, just take your fingers and go like this and try to work it out. Just kind of help it along, like giving your dog a pill. You push, 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 and it'll hang up. You can't push it anymore without it bending. You just work it, a little bit of gentle pressure with your fingernail and work it down and then try it again. And then shake it, shake it, slide it, and then try it again. If it still doesn't work, take it all the way out, clean it real hard, try to blow it, maybe take all the fibers out and blow high pressure through each one of these or just get a new one. But if this breaks right here, you have to do this whole process of this fan out tube and cleaning and everything again. So you don't want it to break up here while you're pushing it. Now, as you're going, you want to make sure that these aren't getting tangled up in here. So you want to stretch it all the way out, make sure it's completely out of the way and then run it in. Take the next one, put it out of the way, take it out. All right, now at this point, let's check and see the ends. Most of them are not coming out yet, so we need to push them a little bit more. Let's get these evened up. And you're just grabbing all 12 at the same time and barely pushing them in. There they are, now they're all coming out. So now, straighten this out, grab all 12 over here and just pull. You wanna get it pretty close, but not all the way. Right about there, and then hold on. Now we're gonna take the other part of this package. Remember the heat seal is holding this triangle off to the side. We're gonna take both of these components out. This piece right here, we lay it right in there. Your tube should go right to the end of the copper. Not past it, not shorter, but right flush even with it. And this chip fits perfectly right in here. Now take your needle nose pliers or your wire strippers or even your snips and we're going to pinch these copper collars all the way down make sure it doesn't slip and cut your fiber or you've ruined everything but all the way until they touch you can't overdo it on these things once they touch that's it they stop see there's a gap here that's no good we have to make it to where they touch there now they're touching the blue is right in that copper these are coming out straight the blue is not exposed out the top and it's not too short. This lid here has a triangle shape that matches this triangle shape. So we just put it right on there and you put it flush. There's four snaps, one, two, three, four, and they all need to go about the same time. And you just squeeze it until they all grab. Now we're done. Now the nice thing about this, with this fan out, this slot right here is the perfect size for a zip tie. So you can tie wrap this to something. Also, these little holes are the perfect size for wood screws, so you can screw it down to some plywood. And then more specifically, for corning boxes, they fit perfectly right in here. That's what this slot is made for. So we're gonna take this around and around. There you go. So the blue would sit there and the orange would stack on top, green and then brown, and they would all stack up right in there. And this wraps around and goes into the coupler panel. And now you're all set. You're ready for terminations. I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions, but this should get you started.